Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Kyo the Geek, and this is Professional Kai Cat, Part 1. Okay, so welcome out to my first KiCad tutorial series. In this series, what we're going to be doing is going through KiCad, and I'm going to be giving a brief introduction about how to use the software. This is basically going to be considered the beginner's class, and uh, I'm going to be doing a later set for more advanced techniques. But for right now, we're just going to start out with some of the basics to know. So in this episode, we're going to be going through pretty much a quick overview of installing KiCad. I'm not going to go into anything specifically for your distribution or your platform, but uh, if you do have any questions, be sure to go ahead and ask those down in the comments below and I can help out where I can. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and talk about file structure, specifically the file structure that I like to use to handle everything with like Git repositories and version control and things like that. The final thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and just create our first project and get everything started. So let's go ahead and start talking about that. Okay, so we're gonna come over here to kicad-pcb.org slash downloads. Don't worry, the link is gonna be in the description. And this is what you're going to see. Currently, the latest release is 5.0.1. And this is your set of options. So if you're running Windows, that package is gonna be right here. Mac is gonna be right here. And then any of the different Linux distributions that are available. So I'm currently on Linux Mint. You can also go through and the uh, Ubuntu directory is pretty much, or installation path is pretty much the exact same thing. Um, if you're on Windows, come in here and take a look at this. It's basically just providing mirrors for you to go through and download. And just like any other piece of software, just an EXE, you're gonna download it, install it, and uh, go ahead and do that. If you want, you can navigate over here and check out the nightly builds and you can download the latest version that's available. Um, one thing that I will make sure to note with this is that KiCad does not come with the default libraries by stock. So you'll have to also go over to this libraries tab and download all of those. It's pretty much the same process and shouldn't be anything too bad. Coming back here to, to Mac OS, I haven't done this myself. I assume this works the same way as any other Mac that I've used, I just don't use them very often. But you're gonna just download the, uh, the package file and just do the normal like click and drag and install into your applications. Um, I assume that's how it works. Don't quote me on that. I apologize, I can't show it or test it or anything. And then if you're running Linux, I do assume you already know how to grab the package for your distribution, but uh, I'll just show you quickly with Mint how this one works. With Mint and other Ubuntu derivatives, they're using the PPA system still. And so you can go through and just use these commands to add the repository, update it, and then install KiCad. If you want to install the nightly builds, you come down here, grab this repository, and uh, install the nightly. And then I'll just quickly show you the downloads links for all of the libraries. Um, these are just githubs that you can go through and, and grab and download and you can unzip those where you need to. If you're running Linux, you can also throw these in as command line arguments when you go through and install it from that PPA. And you can grab the symbols, the footprints, and the packages 3D from there as well. The next thing we're going to talk about is the file structure. This is going to come down to your whatever version of or whatever operating system you're using. Um, again, I'm on Linux Mint, so I'm just going to open up my files here pop into my work folder, which is how I keep everything, um, just to keep my projects laid out in a way that's cohesive. You can put this wherever you want to, but this is how I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna start off here, we're gonna create a new folder, and uh, we're just gonna call this uh, sensors because that's the next project I plan on working on. So sensors-hardware. Uh, I like doing this for the reasons of um, I actually run my own little personal Git repository, and so if I can separate them out and say this is going to be the hardware folder, and then later on I'm going to do just a software folder, uh, that way I can separate the parts uh, out a little better. Inside of this, some of the things I'm going to create, I'm going to create another one that is the documents, and anything that's related to this project I'm going to throw in this documents folder, and then 
I'm gonna go create the sensors, hardware. Um, again, I'm keeping this lowercase. This is actually gonna be come in handy with Git. And then because I'm doing a Git repository for this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a new document. I'm gonna call this readme.md, that's for markdown. And then I'm just gonna create a simple markdown folder or file in here and do something like this. This project is for the sensor board. That's all I'm gonna worry about. And we're gonna call that good. Now inside of here, we're gonna create another folder. I know this starts getting kind of nested, but this helps me with how I do all my versioning to see how everything is and to be able to specifically set up versions for the PCB better. Um, one of the things I do like about KiCad is that all of the files are actually ASCII text, they're readable files. And so uh, if you want to back this up with version control, you can actually do that. You can read through what all the changes are because it's not just a binary file that is just zeros and ones that you can't really tell what's going on. So we're gonna change this folder to version 1.0 and we're gonna we're gonna drop into this one this is actually where we're gonna put the project file for KiCad but we're gonna create just a few more things in here before we create that project create another folder we're gonna start off with our fabrication and this is where all the things like the schematic PDFs the bill of materials the um, generations of the board as a PDF for fabrication can go um, I'll throw different things in there depending on what I need. We're going to create another one for Gerbers. And that's our, all of our Gerber files. Those are the things we generate to send off to a fabrication house. I'm going to set up another one. This is actually going to be called local.pretty. Um, .pretty is actually an extension for KiCad that is used for the footprint libraries. So what we're actually doing is we're going to create our own library of footprints so that this helps make the project more modular. Coming back to this idea of running a Git repository, this means that I can drop all of the footprints I use into this folder. And if somebody else has to open it, then they can actually grab that. All the, the parts are linked to here and there's nothing that really breaks it. If you have other parts that are strewn in different folders or if you're using the KiCad stock um, and they remove a part for some reason, then you can have an issue where you break your continuity. So I just create this local.pretty and throw all my parts into that for the footprints. Uh, and then we're gonna create a local.lib that we're gonna use for our components. Final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a mech folder. This is for our mechanical parts. Anytime we have to hunt down a step file, we can throw that in this folder. And with our footprints, when we link them up to that step file, It'll just keep that continuity between everything and everything that we use will be self-enclosed in this whole project. Okay, and now here we have KiCad. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by creating our project. So we're gonna come up here and you can either click this button, which is gonna create a new project, or you can use the file new project. You can also grab a project from a template. So if you wanna use something like the Arduino shields or um, the Raspberry Pi hats, or the BeagleBone Capes, all those different things. Uh, they have templates in here that you can grab and use from that. You may have to make sure you go through and install those as well because they are additional files. I don't think they come along with the stock download of KiCad, um, but they are easily available to download. But we're gonna go ahead and just create a stock project. We are going to navigate into our sensors, sensors and version one. And then there's this little checkbox here that says create a new uh, directory for this project. I don't like to do that because what that's going to do is it's going to create a new project for a new folder in here called sensors. Uh, we're actually going to type that in right here, sensors hardware. And what that would do is it would just create another, another directory and just give us one more level that we don't want. So we're going to turn that off so it's going to drop all of our files here. And let's go ahead and hit save. And it's going to go ahead and generate a couple of files off the bat. So uh, as you can see right here, we have our schematic that got created and we have our KiCad board file, which got created. And this is all linked in with our project file. So from now, we can actually go ahead and open this up and start working on our schematic. 
but we're gonna start doing that in another video. So um, for right now, I think that'll be enough. And uh, we can go ahead and dive into more things with KiCad in the next episodes in the series. All right, so that's gonna be it for this one. Be sure to like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, but be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you did or didn't like, as well as any other ideas you might have for future projects you'd like to see me do. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so that you get notified as soon as the latest episodes come out. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, at Geek, and that will be where I'm posting out some different things for content that I'm doing and uh, just sharing some different stuff. And I'm starting to get that going, so be patient with me, but uh, be sure to follow along there so you can be notified when I'm doing things there as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.